Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Welcome to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta. I'm a health coach, natural supplement expert, and a busy mom of three teenagers. I believe that your body does want to and is capable of rebuilding and healing itself, regardless of what chronic disease you may have. I'm here for you to answer your questions, bring you innovative and cutting edge technologies and health solutions to empower you and your ability to reach your optimal state of health. Today, my guest will be talking about optimizing athletic performance through digestion and diet. And I know that you really need that strong physical foundation to work on your mental growth, whether it is overcoming anxiety and depression, which everyone is suffering from right now, losing weight or detoxing your body in the proper way, or even increasing your level of frequency in life. You need that strong physical foundation of health in order to gain the willpower to make the bigger changes in life. If you're new to following me, I specialize in helping you get there. You can find my health articles, my cutting edge natural supplements, devices, and protocols at acceleratedhealthproducts.com. I dive into an array of health conditions, their causes and symptoms, and how to address them naturally. I have spent thousands of dollars and hours of my time biohacking different supplements, technologies, and diets that don't work so that you don't have to. And if you have any health issues you need help with, you can email me through the website. I personally read everyone. Accelerated Health Products is the sponsor of this show. So as you support my website, I'm able to bring you more cutting edge content and guests to the show. Like I mentioned, today we're going to be diving in on how to optimize performance and increase muscle through digestion and the benefits of living in a higher state of frequency or vibration as a result. So first I wanted to talk about some frequency enhanced supplements that can aid in the process of healing quicker and more efficiently. Number one, the accelerated keto. This is the only keto supplement that not only kicks you into ketosis within 30 minutes and gets rid of those cravings for sugar and carbs, but also has additional fat burning ingredients that help defat and cleanse your liver. Many of you may be suffering from a fatty liver. Keto on its own helps, but this gets rid, gets you the results much quicker and you will feel mental clarity that you've never felt before and the brain fog lifts. Your energy produced at the cellular level is 10 times more than when you're eating a high carb diet. And personally, I can go all day fasting with amazing mental focus, and that allows my body to heal, reduce the pain and inflammation. And for those of you who can't eat a high fat diet like me, this is a way to kick you into ketosis and use intermittent fasting to maintain that state of fat burning. As you feel better physically, you are able to mentally increase your frequency or vibration and become a better version of yourself. Secondly, acceleridine iodine. Iodine is the wild card in supporting the immune system. It is getting a lot of press right now as everyone is looking for natural antiviral agents. It's not only antiviral, it's anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial, and it goes on and on. It hydrates the cells, it detoxifies the body, and it produces mental and physical energy. It also performs that unique function known as apoptosis, which is the natural death of traumatized and unhealthy cells. And there is no pathogen resistant to iodine. It was actually used to protect people during the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic that killed over 30 million people. And all of these benefits are in addition to its key role in the metabolism and the thyroid, 
for those of you who may be suffering from hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's. And it's also the most important spiritual supplement as it relieves depression and brain fog and helps you connect to your higher self. I talk about increasing your level and frequency, and this means living at a higher level of awareness and spirituality. And the scalar frequencies embedded in the accelerodyne detoxifies your pineal gland, which connects you to your higher self, clears that brain fog, and awakens you. Next is the accelerated scalar silver. There's been more press about silver with what's going on in this current environment that we have right now. And this is the only silver that has a pH of above 8.0. It creates that environment that foreign pathogens may not be able to survive in. And it's also programmed with bioinformational scalar technology to further help strengthen the immune system and devitalize all those foreign pathogens. And like the accelerodyne, the scalar frequencies embedded in the silver lift you to that higher state of being or higher frequency. Num uh, next, the accelerated cellular detox powder. We are gonna be talking about digestion and how the gut has such a huge impact on your muscle building and your performance. The cellular detox powder is a blend of six organic detoxification ingredients, and it helps soak up the toxins, including heavy metals, alcohol, food poisoning, radiation, and also kills parasites and fungus in the digestive tract. It cleans the whole digestive tract, helps with regularity, heals colitis and ulcers, and reduces intestinal inflammation, and it's safe to use every day. And it's now programmed with those scalar frequencies to detox you from heavy metals and insecticides. Now to the good stuff. Wade Lightheart is an author, athlete, nutritionist, and expert on fixing digestion. This is his second time on. He is a three-time Canadian national bodybuilding champion who competed as a vegetarian, former Mr. Universe competitor, host of the Awesome Health Podcast. He's authored numerous books on health and nutrition and exercise, which has been sold in over 80 countries. Wade also serves in as, as an advisor to the American Anti-Cancer Institute and is the co-founder and president of Bio Optimizers, a digestive and health optimizing company. It's been featured on many of the biggest podcasts in the industry, including Dave Asprey and Ben Greenfield. Welcome, Wade. How are you today? Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so excited to have you back. Um, we talked last time about your journey a bit, and so people can learn more about you in that episode. But I want to give a short synopsis of your history in bodybuilding and athletics, because that's what our focus is going to be on today. Sure, thanks. Um, I started my bodybuilding journey when I was 15. My parents moved to a very rural area. My sister was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, cancer of the lymph nodes. And she gave me a bodybuilding magazine about that time. And um, it had a picture of Troy Zuclato who just won Mr. California and these two pretty girls on the cover and being nothing better to do. I built the gym in my barn and thought maybe if I worked out and got some muscles that I would be attractive to women like that as well. So I bought the Joe Weider lie, as they say. <laughs> but um, the good news was it's during that time I discovered the principles that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time, who wrote a book called Education of a Bodybuilder, and he said that you could achieve anything in life with uh, a positive attitude, self-discipline, and hard work. Well, everybody I knew worked really hard in the environment. It was forestry, it was fishing, it was uh, a lot of manual labor type uh, exercise or work careers, and that's what everybody was doing, and everybody worked hard, but this whole positive attitude and self-discipline, and he said, the foundation for his success in the movies and business and government, all these areas that he was successful, he said, was embedded in what he learned as a bodybuilder. And of course, he had won all these titles and everything. So I thought, hey, this sounds like a great program. I'm going to start doing that. And that started my journey working out. Uh, I went to university at the ex and studied exercise physiology at the University of New Brunswick and went on to develop uh, and get certified as a sports nutrition advisor and worked my career to virtually every facet of the health and fitness industry, um, eventually owning my own stores and developing my own company. But concordant to that, I was competing as an athlete and ended up 
winning a few national championships and going to the world championships. But after the first one, I went to my first Mr. Universe. I, I gained 42 pounds of fat and water in 11 weeks after the contest. I had wrecked my digestive system. And fortunately, I had met a doctor, Dr. Michael O'Brien, who was a senior citizen, super vibrant, just everything that you would want to be as a senior citizen. In fact, as any person, I never met a more vibrant person than this this individual and he had overcome colon cancer and he'd overcome cirrhosis of the liver and he had over he had helped bernard jensen recover from cancer in his book come alive it's uh, diagnosed and all of this was related to his digestive system and so i became a student and um, dr o'brien mentored me and over the next six months i was able to rebuild my digestive system completely transform my health and gain back my physique and so the, the good news about the bad thing was is that I developed a new way of application. My business partner and I, Matt Gallant, had been selling uh, courses on online muscle building, aesthetic performance, strength training online during this time. And we wanted to help, help people avoid this. And we gathered over 15,000 students who would give us their feedback. And we found ways to improve and optimize their performance. And that led to uh, eventually the cultivation of bioptimizers. So it's been kind of one concordant journey, which is the developing of biological optimization technologies for people's digestion, for people's nervous system, for people's brains. And of course, with a foundational uh, conceptual concept we call the awesome health formula. And we've just recently some books on it recently called the Biolog biological optimization blueprint. Basically it's a systematized approach of how we address first cause, second cause, third cause, so that you, you can't supplement your way out of a bad diet, but there are principles that you can apply in a systemic, uh, systematic way that allows you to achieve what I would say uh, foundational and then step up results. If you don't build the foundation, you don't, uh, you don't end up with the home. So that's, the, that's an issue. So we, uh, we address all those uh, in our programs. So let's talk about that. What are the, I mean, cause I am a, a believer that you can't jump into the 10th step before you do the first couple. So where, where do you start? Well, I built a philosophy called the awesome health philosophy. And I looked at what's the common element in human organisms is the body cells. So whether it's a brain cell or a muscle cell or a liver cell or a toenail cell, it's, it's still a collection of cells. And these cells have uh, a common function in, 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 in how they extract energy and how they remove toxins. And, and so I thought, well, there's all these competing visions or versions of health and functioning. What are the common elements? And then how do we address that? And so most nutritionists will address diet first. But I go from a cellular operational perspective, that's not the most important thing. And I can tell you why that is with a little bit of deductive reasoning. First and foremost, you can go months without food. It's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, I don't recommend it, but you will survive. You can only go a week or two without water. Okay. Again, unpleasant, but you will expire with, from lack of, from dehydration much faster than you will from lack of food. And Again, on top of that, you need oxygen in the removal of carbon dioxide out of the system, which is waste product from the cells, which in India, if you study healing, they actually say the exhale is the first part of the breath and the inhale is a second. It's actually a detoxification pathway more than is an energization. Mm -hmm. And that's how people achieve the breathless state by super oxygenating their body and they're, if you're doing like the Wim Hof, you super oxygenate the tissues and your breathing rate immediately drops in concurrent brain state. So I said, okay, well, guess what? If we, and then if we took a person and put them in a hospital bed, for example, or strapped you down and didn't move you, every physiological function goes down regardless of your diet. So we know that air, water, and exercise should be addressed before you get to your dietary recommendations. These three things are non-negotiable. Air is very, uh, learning how to breathe properly and consistently and to use breath to alter brain state or physiological function or energy. Most inexpensive form of health vitality there is. 
And uh, you can learn something very applicable in a few minutes or a couple of sessions mm -hmm. and it'll lead to your whole life. Second, getting the absolute best water in your life and removing the contaminants in our water supply. We're lucky that we have water supplies by cities, but they're free forced to use a lot of chemical agents in order to stabilize the water, in order to clean the water and to reduce the bacteria components and things like fluoride and chlorine and many of the agents and drugs that get into the recycled water supply and stuff like that. These are major, major toxicities that affect every aspect of our fortune. So getting really good pre-filtration and, and, and um, some sort of water technology in your life, I think is a great foundational component for getting your health in order. And then finding something that you do exercise. See, Techno unintended consequences of technological innovation have led us to a, a super sedentary lifestyle. Like we didn't have to worry about exercise as humans till, till technology started to happen after World War II, when we started living very inner houses and not doing thing and push button everything. So we have to actually counteract the convenience of our life with consistent and regular exercise on a, any given day. And then the next four things are sunlight, uh, so I look at everything in the body as physics. It's all condensed light. Uh, and so it, light is both a frequency and it's a particle in a wave. And the intensity, frequency, duration, color, vibration, all these sort of things will determine. So anything from color therapy to food function to how you convert that into the electrons that your mitochondria use is, is really all diet is about. And then we look at what are the things that optimize cellular function? Enzymes and probiotics, the only thing that do work in the body, they're the workers. Then you have essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, um, minerals, vitamins, and then herbs, which kind of move electrical energy through the various meridians in the body. After that, you have mental beliefs and attitude, which you could probably put first because of a poor attitude, you will never have great health. If you have a great attitude, you can get away with a lot of things and still have a great life. And then finally, education, testing, and coaching. Adduce is the root word of education, which is to learn from within. And to learn from within, you have to run a test. And to run a test could be, can I walk up the stairs? Can I run a mile? Can I lift a weight? Can I do whatever test you want to invent? And through that, we develop a system of practices that work for us. Now, if you want to fast track that, you get the third part, which is the coach. So it's the et cetera part. And the coach has run a series of these experiences prior to meeting you and can take that knowledge and provide you some specific actionable standards that will undoubtedly improve the quality of your life without you having to waste all the time and energy. And that's why we hire coaches to cut the learning time and the opportunity cost that's lost by trying to do trial and error. So that philosophy we give away on our website I condensed it, I didn't invent all the formats, I just put them in an easy to follow systematic format so that we could get some concordance between all the information out there that leaves people with analysis paralysis. Well, Mary said this and this doctor said that and that one said that and everything seems conflicting because of the generalization and lack of application and understanding of first principles. I just love everything that you just said because if you don't get those basics down, taking probiotics or enzymes or doing things at the the end of the the protocol mean nothing if you're stressed out and your gut is in wreaking havoc because of the stressors and the cortisol in your body or the toxins you're taking in with the water you're drinking you're just you're just a salmon swimming upstream and you're not going to get anywhere so okay let's dive in I want to talk about athletics. We are looking at a guy who has been down the road of bodybuilding on a vegan diet, which most people will sit there and go, there's no way. And without the steroids and everything else that most people are doing. So in the athletic world, no one focuses on digestion as a means to improve their performance. Their focus is on the protein shakes, maybe clean eating and the performance enhancing supplements. I mean, my son is 18, he's a rower. All of his teammates are like, well, what are you taking? I, I take this protein shake. They go to GNC and just get the cheapest one out there because they're on a budget. But let's talk about where 
that focus is wrong, where the where the masses are going wrong, and what should they be focused on? Great question. So one of the things that uh, mistakes that I made and people can learn from is that when I was competing for the Mr. Universe, I was trying to apply what I would call a meat eating mentality to a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. And that didn't work very well. And why I got into so much trouble was I was getting a buildup of undigested protein in my body. So your muscles don't actually need protein. They need the amino acids that come from protein, same as the neurotransmitters in your brain are built from the amino acids that you get from your diet that are converted by enzymes and probiotics into the building blocks that allow our bodies to reconstruct these essential components in our body. So the classic uh, format for most strength sports was one gram per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds like me, you would have to eat 200 grams of protein in a divided bunch of meals, probably anywhere from four to six meals a day, that you would do this in conjunction with your exercise routine in order to provide the recovery. Now, that works great if you have a great digestion system, which certainly lots of kids are okay with that, but as they get older, they start running into a whole variety of problems. Arthritis, arthritis inflammation, brain fog, uh, chronic bad breath, gas, uh, bloating, all these sort of things, which are indications that you are not actually converting that one gram of protein into one gram of amino acids. And uh, as I learned under my mentor is that, well, actually, most of the protein wasn't even getting used at all. It was either getting crapped out of your system or was bleeding through your intestinal walls into the system and causing inflammatory reactions where your body started to attack it as an immune system response. And I always found it funny, you would see the research showing how things like whey protein would cause, they would say, oh, it boosts you know, white blood cells as if this was a positive immune response. Mm -hmm. When in fact, it might've actually been an inflammatory response uh, projected or purported as a, as a, as a song. Now we're not going to get here and slice the onions of whether it is or whether it isn't. But what I would suggest is I was like, okay, well, how do I optimize the conversion of the protein I'm eating into the amino acids that my body needs? And so I ran a series of experiments over the course of four years to see how low I could get my protein if I optimize my digestion. And what I discovered is I only needed at 200 pounds, I only needed 85 grams a day if I was using proteolytic enzymes and, and proteolytic probiotics, which interestingly enough, if we were eating a diet, very much like every other animal species on the planet that was raw and cooked and contained the, the living enzymes and probiotics that would be present with that food, whether you are a carnivore, uh, omnivore, or uh, a vegan or a vegetarian, however you would get that in its natural state, you would have the digestive capability to absorb and utilize that protein very much uh, more effectively. However, we cook our food and food that's been denatured or processed or whatever, doesn't have any enzymes, doesn't have any probiotics present unless they've been added to it. And we have to like, put that into the account for our ability to break down and utilize it. Otherwise it's going to drain our energetic reserves. So all that to say, um, I was able to figure that out, but I was using digestive aids and I did discover that my own digestion had been compromised as is most people. Uh, we changed our food production 80 years ago. We added, uh, nitrogen from leftover bombs to increase crop yield. We went to monoculturing from crop rotation. So we didn't reconstitute the soil. The plant started to weaken as it gave up its, uh, protein to make enzymes to grow on a mineral deficient soil. Then bugs came in and started eating up the plants and blithe and bacteria and all these sort of thing, pests. And so then we started using herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides, further devaluating the, the value of the food, plus stripping out the minerals from the soil. Then we packaged it and we processed it and we added preservatives and dyes, all which compromise our digestive system to the extent that in America today, 12% of the emergency hospital visits are related to gastrointestinal issues. 
That's people going to the hospital because something is, they need to be in the emergency condition. A hundred million people have digestive problems. So the reason people aren't able to maintain their muscle mass, the reason that people are having um, neurological imbalances, uh, dysfunctional immune responses, gas, bloating, they're feeling tired all the time. They're not sleeping properly, often correlate with poor digestion and the ability to convert the food they're eating into the energy units or the building blocks. And if you reverse this trend, you need far less protein and you'll have far less challenges when you consume a higher protein diet. Well, I have to just tell you, you're looking at someone that went to the emergency room for gastrointestinal issues. I was pregnant with my second child thinking that I was having contractions, but they were actually intestinal spasms. And I, they gave me a narcotic while I was pregnant looking. This is when I was totally oblivious to what health really was. And I trusted my doctor. Um, but that is, that was my breaking point where I, thought, okay, I have to figure this out. And as I improved my digestion, everything else started working better. My brain, my athleticism, my, my energy throughout the day. I mean, the naps that I needed during the afternoon, that's not normal. You're not supposed to need a nap at three in every day in the afternoon. And so all of this is, is connected. And I just love what you're saying. Cause I, I was one that was doing whey protein shakes and, you know, more protein is better, right? The more, so let's talk about protein. The more protein is better. And what are the wrong proteins versus the right proteins? Because those are myths that everyone needs to um, correct in their, in their minds. Well, I think there's, you know, there's always, I always say there's not absolutes. There's what's called trade-offs. And one of the benefits of consuming more protein is that one it, protein is hard for your body to break down and digest so it burns a lot of calories to digest the food right one could compare a steak to a sugary drink there's a very big difference between how quickly those get consumed um so for a lot of diet programs they will use protein for two functions one to increase satiety because protein mm -hmm oftentimes makes you feel full. And the second thing, it generally in protein sources don't have a lot of calories relative to the meal. So by adding protein, you feel full, you eat less, and it takes more energy to break down the food. That's the benefits from a dietary perspective. The downside of it is oftentimes the exhausting of the body's resources, namely its enzymatic bank account, its um, stress on the microbiome. And maybe as we get older, when we tend to have lower hydrochloric acid levels, we might start triggering things like acid reflux or heartburn, or we might find that we start have getting leaky gut, or we get bad bacteria that start eating the undigested proteins in their intestinal tract, creating brain fog like Indol and Skadol and, and, and the associative inflammatory responses like things like arthritic, anything with an itis is an inflammatory response, that's, which is an over response of the immune system due to the presence of undigested protein oftentimes inside the body. That could be anything from a virus to an amino acid that hasn't been converted or an alcohol sugar with a protein attachment, which can lead to things like gout. So, you know, any of those things are all foundational in the gut and the digestive system. So what we want to do is regardless of the protein intake that we take, we want to make sure that we can absorb, digest and utilize that. Now, there was a variety of different mechanisms that were purported by various groups biological availability, protein efficiency ratio, and you'd see these uh, throughout the world. And then you'd have people saying, well, eggs are better than chicken, chicken's better than fish is better than chicken, and you know, turkey is better than that. Like, you know, so you have all these kind of ratios. Now I would say that different people do better on different proteins. And that's genetics and epigenetics and digestive capability. So I think getting some individual testing to see you know, some people, I don't have, for example, I don't have problems eating legumes 
lentils and things like that. I know a lot of people that can't have those things. They just cannot do it, right? Um, there are other people, if you look at guys like Jordan Peterson, the only the, the famous psychologist, all he can eat right now is meat because he has a genetic autoimmune disease, both him and his daughter, which has dire effects. And it's a terrible, boring lifestyle. It's like all I eat is steak. Uh, and he's lost 70 pounds doing that. But he, he would be the first to tell you, I don't advise this diet for you. I'm doing it as, as, as contra to, to, to counter the, the negative autoimmune effects that he has to deal with on an individual basis. So anything that I say is a generalization, but there are principles from that. And that is, are you breaking down and digesting food? And that's easy to tell. Yeah. How long are you sleeping? Are you waking up with brain fog? Do you have bad breath or crusty eyes at night? Do you feel tired, gassed, and bloated? And generally, if you are, probably aren't breaking down your protein. And that's where digestive aids like enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and proteolytic probiotics will generally solve all of those issues in a relatively short period of time. And that's what I had to do. And that's what literally thousands of people that we've helped have to do. And Wade, I have to tell you, all three of those things have been game changers for me personally. I um, I cannot eat a meal without hydrochloric acid anymore, for sure. So we are going to take a quick commercial break and come back and talk with Wade about digestion, but also how to build that muscle because a, a lot of our athletes are wanting to know how to do it and can you intermittent fast and, and still get those results. So we'll be right back after this short commercial. Welcome back to Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I'm your host, Sarah Banta, the owner of Accelerated Health Products. And today we have Wade Lightheart talking about how to build muscle through the proper diet and digestion and how enzymes and these things that most people don't focus on affect your, your health. So Wade, let's talk about if you, I mean, let's take my son, for instance, he has a low body fat. He wants to perform athletically. He wants to build muscle like every 18 year old, but he's also eating a more, um, he's focused on this protein, eating a more ketogenic diet. But what would you tell athletes out there? Number one, I really want to touch on intermittent fasting and because there's a myth of you're just going to lose weight if you're fasting. And, and most people don't want that um, if they're into athletics and they're, they're wanting to build their muscles. So is that possible to do with intermittent fasting? I know you don't eat three days a week. Um, and also how to properly di digest the, the protein and what supplements are absolutely needed for that muscle building and athletic performance? Great question. So first and foremost, the number one focus on building muscle is a professionally developed strength and conditioning program that is designed to develop the growth of muscular tissue. And there are two different camps in order to do that. There are the what I would say the traditional Olympic lifting and power lifting styles, which are generally low reps uh, and compound movements, which are usually generated for power and strength, and particularly the hips, the legs, and things like that, which is relegated to athletic performance. Then there is the actual building of more muscle tissue to be bigger and stronger, which is more of a bodybuilding style, 
which will be medium to high reps in a lot more volume per se than some of the power sports. So that needs to be the foundational thing. Uh, as a young person who has, for a general rule, higher levels of testosterone and growth hormone and um, a better insulin response, those three chemicals are going to be the big drivers on your growth. So you want to be highly insulin uh, sensitive. Mm -hmm. And that means because insulin is the number one hormonal or anabolic hormone in the body, not testosterone. I would say testosterone would be second and growth hormone would be third. So those are the big three chemicals. And a lot of people will supplement their diet with those things through the use of drugs. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. As we age, the use of fasting becomes more and more important because fasting boosts our insulin sensitivity mm -hmm. for a general rule, particularly with males, it will increase testosterone production and growth hormone production. So as an older athlete, and what I mean by that is anyone that's, you know, going beyond the age of 25 and certainly 35. And definitely if you're up into my age, which we're getting close to a half century, you'll find that you will become much easier at building muscle tissue if you incorporate um, fasting in the diet. You, you, and it's really because you set the hormonal environment that's superior. You don't have the testosterone levels and the growth hormone. And and, and when, with young people, you really should take a look at their blood sugar response because there's many kids that are pre-diabetic. So the more pre-diabetic or tendency for, you know, poor sugar metabolism that a person is, the better they are going to do with ketogenic or with intermittent fasting or a combination of the, of the two. If they are doing that, let's say you're doing intermittent fasting, you wanna incorporate intermittent fasting for the health benefits and the insulin sensitivity, what I would suggest is to incorporate, if you're gonna add carbohydrates to the meal, do it before and after workouts are the key times where you will get the benefits of a higher level of insulin as an anabolic response, mm. okay? The second thing is some people, and it's a rare group of people, if they're training a lot and are kind of on the hyper side, will do better if they have uh, some sort of simple carbs with protein at night. Mm -hmm. For most people, that's going to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for so it's a probably an 80 20 rule. So, some young people, when I was younger, I was a very, I had to train all the time and had to work out all the time. I was like just a force far as the exercise side. So when I was trying to build muscle for me, taking something that would be a simple carbohydrate at night, as I got later, would crash my blood sugar and I would pass out. I would shut down. Most people that's going to totally screw up their sleep. They're better off by not eating, say, after six o'clock or a set time if they're going to bed at 10 or 11 or 12 or something like that. Just like cut that out and keep your window between four and eight hours. The, the younger you are, the higher your metabolism, you may have to eat more frequently. So if that's the case, you would only maybe intermittent fast one day a week, or you can use that in cycling your protein convert. So maybe you go on, like if you're a 150 pound person, you would go 150 grams of protein for two weeks, three weeks max. Then you would, you would set maybe an intermittent fasting phase for 10 days to two weeks, cut down on the training, reset the system and then increase the training and the protein load as you go forward. And what you're doing is you're consistently shifting the uh, production and uh, of your hormones, as well as the resetting of your insulin sensitivity, as well as adjusting to your training volume. So those parameters can be manipulated. And if you're a good coach in that area, you can break down these things in specific training cycles that will allow a person to gain plenty of muscle mass without the use of anabolic drugs. Because once you go down that route, there, there are severe consequences to taking that, that you may not realize till a little bit later down the road and you realize that it wasn't really worth it. It'll take you longer to build the muscle and keep it uh, if you do it naturally, but you will keep it and you will get all of the concordant benefits of it 
as opposed to the liabilities of it, which if you go the other route. Let's talk, you touched on, uh, obviously intermittent fasting, most people recognize the effect on insulin, but I want to stress the effect on testosterone and human growth hormone, especially as we age. Uh, you know, my husband's over 50 and he keeps asking how to improve his testosterone and human growth hormone naturally without taking the shots. What can you explain that and dive a little deeper into that? Yeah. For most men, they're going to do better if they don't eat before noon and sometimes two or three in o'clock. And it's best if they have a window of anywhere from four to six hours um, is usually the best range. So eating less frequently is good. Making sure they have a sufficient amount of, interesting enough, saturated fats. Mm -hmm. And saturated fats from things like uh, you know olive oil or something is going to be superior to unsaturated fats. So saturated fats will be able to manufacture the hormones that help produce testosterone. So there's plenty of people that's gone on a very unsaturated fat diet, which there's some health benefits, particularly from lowering triglycerides, but you do not have the compounds required to build testosterone levels. So they look better or they feel healthier and their testosterone crashes and they're like, they have no sex drive or no get up and go. And so, uh, when you put these condensed windows, you can generally have a higher fat diet. And that's why I think there's uh, a lot of people who are getting benefits from ketogenic type diets, which are higher fat, higher, moderate in protein and very, very low in carbohydrates because they're suppressing insulin in the body. They're boosting hormonal profile by the, the, the cultivation of saturated fats to, to boost up hormones and they're having these extended periods where their body becomes more insulin sensitive is what you want from an anabolic perspective, as well as producing much more growth hormone, which has an anti-aging and also a muscle preservation as well as an endurance effect. In other words, you will use more body fat as your protein, as your energy source than relying on carbohydrates. So, from a longevity perspective, that would be more effective as you get older and older. So less refined carbohydrates. Now, there are other schools that you can go by, um, which require a little bit more meticulousness if you are like myself, who are on a vegetarian diet, which is, you know, relatively low protein. And, you know, I have to be very mindful of the fats that I consume and stuff like that. So I, I don't necessarily advocate what I'm going to do or what, what, people should do what I do, but it can be done either way if you know what you're doing. Well, and I, I, I want to stress that because I was eating a full ketogenic diet, high fat, moderate protein, low carb, and realized that I have a fat malabsorption issue, genetically speaking, and I was just not going to be my optimal self until I started doing a lot more intermittent fasting to get myself into ketosis. I use the accelerated keto, but then I stick to a higher protein vegetable diet and lower the fats and I get my fats in my animal protein just naturally. And that works for me, but I've got a family of five and two of us can digest fat very easily. Three of us can't. We've got one that is on the verge of celiac. We've got two that could be uh, diabetic if we go the wrong direction. And, you know, I've got my son is able to drink a glass of orange juice, no problem. I look at an orange juice and I will, my blood sugar will spike. So we, yeah. everyone is different. And I love that you focus on that as well. We have a few more minutes and I want to make sure we touch on the right probiotics and enzymes because there's so much out there and a lot of it's junk and we want to make sure we're getting the right ones that are actually doing the jobs we need them to do. Yes. So in 2004, when I began this journey of how do I optimize amino acid utilization in the body, we went out and developed a product we call Masszymes, enzymes for the masses, which contain five different types of proteases, about 55% of that formulation is protein with 17 different enzymes in total that will break down just about any meal that anybody could possibly have. <laughs> and that product, we still, we have our third generation of that today. Uh, we've added a couple things that enhance the enzymatic activity. 
it's basically the all-in-one superior digestive uh, proteolytic enzyme that you can get. Like there's almost nothing. In fact, we have videos on our website where we actually break down a piece of steak in a cup mm -hmm. to demonstrate the effectiveness. We also developed a patented probiotic strain and that probiotic strain is unusual. We took L plantarum, put it into a uh, chemical sludge and ran a sine wave through it. The remaining ones that survived that, which most didn't, we grow them on special mediums and that bacteria had patentable um, properties that other probiotics did not elicit. Particularly, it's good at breaking down protein, undigested proteins it, that would happen in the gastrointestinal tract. This has profound immune system benefits as well as removing the bad bacteria uh, and potential pathogens like viruses and things like that out of the body because it'll break down those protein coatings that are on that. So this is very, very powerful product in doing that. Those two things were my staples for years and upshoring I had the proper digestion and absorption. However, there's this funny thing called aging that happens. <laughs> and when I got into my early 40s, I was doing some analysis and my naturopathic doctor says to me, Wade, you need to add hydrochloric acid to your diet. I'm like, what are you talking about? I am the epitome of digestive health. I own a digestive health company. And they're like, well, Unfortunately, you are getting older and your body is producing less hydrochloric acid. This is something that's quite, uh, there's a high propensity of the population to do this. So they suggest, and I had, had actually contracted a parasite. So hydrochloric acid does two things. It, does, it uh, changes the pH that activates and deactivates enzymes in the digestive process. But then the second thing that it does, and maybe the most important thing, is it's it's the it's what kills the pathogens, the bugs, the viruses, the bacteria, all these things that come into our digestive system that causes all sorts of problems, infections, disease, sickness, illness, all that stuff. And so what we did is uh, I started taking uh, a whole bunch of, I, I started testing and going through all these different hydrochloric acids and eventually came up and I said, well, I want a betaine hydrochloric acid that has the right mineral profile and enzymes that activate it. And uh, we developed one in order to do that. We called it HCL Breakthrough to, to be the most comprehensive hydrochloric acid. So those three products will solve, I believe, about 90% of the digestive issues that are out there in the world. And we've got, that's why we've been around for 15, 16 years doing this. If it doesn't side, solve a person's digestive issues, two things. One, we give the person their money back. They tried it. Two, that person is probably going to need to hire a medical professional because they have some variant of a very serious condition that needs to be addressed with medical intervention or I would say uh, very uh, well-developed naturopathic uh, remedies for that particular condition. And so you find that out really quickly. So you can get your digestive system solved relatively quickly with those three products. And if that doesn't work, we give you your money back and that will direct you to say, hey, you know what? I need a professional to step in here and address those issues. And for most people, it'll do the trick. Amazing. Well, thank you. We are out of time. But before we go, can you tell people where they can find you? Oh. Sorry. We had the, uh, I think we got muted. Yep, there we there go. We go. <laughs> sure. We'll get the editing team to fix that. Um, <laughs> if you go to bioptimizers.com or bioptimizers.com slash accelerated, put in accelerated 10, you get 10% discount on any one of our sites. That's bioptimizers, B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com. We got Facebook and social media and Google and all or whatever that Instagram is, all those sort of things that my team puts out there. Uh, we give away our free course, which I talked about earlier, the Awesome Health Formula. So you can get all that information and get the foundational components. And of course, uh, we have all kinds of uh, people standing by to help you out and ask your question and you know deal with your questions. And we teach everything that we do and we back everything up by 100% guarantee. And I recommend watching his podcast. The um, information we got to today is just a sliver of what he has to offer. And you're so knowledgeable. You've lived it. And so has Matt. And I love the fact that you guys have completely different um, diets showing that 
these are solutions for everyone on every diet. So that is what I love the most. Um, well, thank you, Wade, for coming. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. If I can help you with your health issues, you can contact me directly through the website, acceleratedhealthproducts.com. I'm happy to put together a personalized protocol for you. I know sometimes it's hard to know where to start. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Accelerated Health Products and YouTube and all of the podcast platforms, uh, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, Pandora, or whatever podcast platform you subscribe to under Accelerated Health Radio and TV. I also do Accelerated Health Bites where I do short informational videos on health topics and solutions that you ask me about. So if you have a question, let me know and I will address the topic. If you like what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button and share with a few of your friends who may need our help as you share my channel. It helps me help more people like you and bring more cutting edge guests like Wade to the show. Join us next week and you can also use coupon W4HC20 for 20% off AcceleratedHealthProducts.com. Thanks again for joining us here on Accelerated Health Radio and TV. Have a great week, everybody.